I'm Grace and this is Kevin and we are the stories. We are comparing Kenyan and American culture to see what's different, but also what's similar. Today, we're talking about education. Well, that's right. If there's something I've noticed about Kenya, it's that the people there really value education. It goes back, I think, to the independence movement. And even today, education is still highly prized. And you have a different system here in Kenya, too. System here in Kenya, too. And system here in Kenya. <laughs> oh, my God. We're in America. And you have a... <laughs> okay. Seriously, for real. And you have a different system here in America, too. So here are five ways Kenyan and American schools are different. <sighs> That's the crowd cheering. Now, we're just going to talk about schooling for young people to the age of 18. And we're not going to get into college or university. We'll save that for another video. Yeah. All right. Levels of education. So in America, students are divided according to their age generally. First grade is about age six through 12th grade, which is about age 18. And we also have kindergarten, which is age five. So you've got elementary school, your K to five generally. And then you have middle school or junior high school, or maybe both depending on where you are, which is usually grade six through eight. And then you have high school which is grades nine through 12. Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. So sometimes you hear that. Sometimes you might hear people say primary and secondary school, but primary would be equal to elementary. And then secondary generally is your middle school through high school. The usage is not standard in America. That's interesting. I'm sorry, in Kenya, we have a formal education structure that follows a model referred to as 844. You have eight years of primary school. In each grade, as you call them, we refer to as standard. I think the minimum age you can be in standard one is six years. Oh, so standard one is really like first grade. grade. One, Yeah, so you have standard one to standard eight. And then the four, we now it changes to form. So you have mm -hmm. form one, form two, up to form four, and this is high school. Yeah, so you call that high school too. Or secondary school, it's the oh, same okay. thing. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so and form one, is equivalent to ninth grade in the US. Yes, and then the other four is for like uh, university or college or whatever. Number two, grading and assessment. Now in America, grades are generally starting from A plus, they go down to F, right? So you've got A plus, A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, C, same thing, D, same thing. There's no E, and then you go to F. F is just fail, like you did not pass. Sorry. This varies depending on where you are, though, because America does not have one standard educational system. It's actually different depending on what state you're in. So each state has their own department of education, which can be confusing. I know when I was in elementary school, we didn't have those kinds of letter grades. So you got an O for outstanding, E for excellent, S was satisfactory. And then I think the last one was NI, which is needs improvement. But again, it, it varies depending on what school you're in and maybe even when you're going to that school. So for us, our grading system is more or less similar. I remember I used to get like percentages. So 80 and then at the side of it, my teacher would write good, excellent. On the report form, this is a thing you get. We would get a report card. The teacher writes, oh, you know, you need to improve. You're doing excellent. It's just to show, an, you know, progress. When it comes to taking those final exams, yes. what's that grading like? It ranges from A plus or a star. Wait, wait, A plus or a star? Yeah, it can be either an A star or an A plus. It's the same thing. Mm. One A star. Uh, An A uh, uh. What's your lowest grade? E. Oh. Which e. letter? E for... Uh... A minus is probably 70%. Whoa, really? Yeah. So an A minus for us would be like 92%. There's no B star. Now it's just a B plus. E is, is, e is just an E equivalent thing. to our F, which is yes. like... You didn't, you didn't win. Sorry. <laughs> Try again private, public. Your primary school, that's free, right? Yes, it's compulsory, but if you feel- That means you have to go. It's free for public schools. If you're, you know, a bit wealthy or wealthy, you can take your kid to a private school. Oh, well, yeah, that's the same as the US too. Your kid has to go to school, no exceptions, and it's free, which is the same in, in the US. Yeah. We have free public schools, and then we have private schools. Sometimes they're religious schools. And then we also have something called charter schools. And this depends on what state you're in. 
but generally charter schools are also free. They just offer an alternative to the norm, the regular school. And this is true from kindergarten through 12th grade. You have options depending on where you are. That's interesting. Yeah, we do have, you call them Harambe schools. Harambe. That's the Kenyamato, right? Yeah. Are you going to so ask Harambe, me what it means? Oh. <laughs> I'm very excited to what tell you. What do you think Harambe means? Unity or togetherness or something like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So Harambe is like a community. So this kind of school, you find a community raising funds to have kids who are probably underprivileged coming and getting an opportunity to, you know, further the education. So like a, a village, say, would, mm -hmm. would raise money for the school. And then that would allow their people to go. And I assume that's true of high school too. High school education is not free, unlike the primary one. Students who scored really good grades, like mm -hmm. A stars, but they don't have the you know finances. You'd find such a person going to this Harambe schools, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Final exams. In high school, you also do a final exam that the entire country does, which is a KCSE. Yeah. <laughs> Great. You okay. can't go to uni any university in Kenya without KCSE results. Mm -hmm. So um, remember when I said like the government determines what high school you go to? This is similar to university as well. So if you score an A+, plus, they give you options. You can do medicine, engineering, but maybe you want to do, uh, you want to be a chef. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You can still say no to those. So like a certain grade, it presents you with a list of options. Yes. If you get an A+, plus, you're pretty much open to pursue what you want to do. Yeah. So if you get a lower grade, you can do the KCSE again, go back to school for one oh. year. And so the cutoff for university is C plus. That's I think 55% and above. So if you get like a C, just a C, yeah. you can do a diploma, then do your undergraduate. If you get a D, you can do a certificate, mm -hmm. then a diploma, then undergraduate. Interesting. When you get to your senior year in an American high school, you basically get to study what you want to study uh, to some extent. And of course, again, this depends on where you are, what state you're in. So for example, in New York State, we have final exams for major subjects like English, math, mm. sciences, and you need to pass a certain number of these tests in order to graduate, in order to get your high school diploma. That basically is, you can go to school, you can go to college now, or you can get a job, you can do lots of things with this high school diploma. A lot of schools, and this is changing now, a lot of universities, a lot mm -hmm. of colleges, required another standardized test called the SAT. Maybe you've heard of that before. Yeah. It's actually put out by a private company. For a long time, it used to be you, your perfect score was a 1600. What was this called? Well, I don't like to brag, <laughs> but now uh, universities, they're not requiring it as much. Uh, they standardized no. testing. Their finding is not as effective at predicting if a student or a learner is, is going to be good in college. They're looking more at your transcripts, which is the record of all of the grades you've gotten in high school. I actually got a D in physical education once because I, I didn't go. There are other standardized tests too. There's something called the ACT, but ultimately you can choose what you want to do. You know, let's, you can get all A's on something and then be like, you know what? I just want to be a race car driver or something. You can just do that. Achieve the dream. College and career readiness. It's a big thing in American schools, or it has been for some time, that these schools want to prepare you for college. There was a big push mm. for for students to do very well in school, in high school specifically, so that they could go to college. Mm. Um, but I think what that's left us with is there's now a lack of people who work trades. And I mean, we, we need that in any place. We need that people to build roads, people to, um, to be plumbers, to be electricians. Mm -hmm. So now I think there's more of a balance in American high schools. They wanna prepare you for trades or for college. They want you to be ready to be a citizen, to be a member of society, and hopefully do something good, you know? And I get that sense in Kenya, too, that there's this idea that Kenyan citizens are coming together, Harambe, <laughs> to make Kenya better, yeah. to improve the country, the country as a whole. We believe that with education comes a better life, hmm. you know? 
and um, promoting women in school. You mm. know, that, that's been a big thing. No, oh, that's good. Look, I know we've only scratched the surface of the differences between these two education systems. <laughs> Do you did you scratch the surface? Is that not, you don't say that? We've just scratched the surface. Like we've just got it started. As always, if you like this video and you want to see more, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get our notifications. If you have school experiences you want to share, whether here in America or in Kenya, let us know in the comments. Yeah, or find us on social media. All the relevant links are below in the description. So go ahead and give those a click. And while you're down there, you might see there's a link to my Patreon. And if you become a supporter, you get access to some pretty sweet perks, like uh, behind the scenes content, stuff like that. <laughs> Until next time, Kwa Harry. Bye. On a list from best to worst, there's always family first. While others may be rich of pocket, we are rich of heart.